Okay, this is going to be a really, really quickly speedy introduction to this video because I know it's already really long, but I've essentially um, just gone through my entire personal statement. Uh, I've analysed it and annotated it and I've gone through things which I would keep, I would take out, um, where I messed up, I think. I definitely do think they're useful bits which you'll read and you'll, I don't know, maybe take inspiration from or... Um, adapt for your own personal statement in some ways. I mean, obviously don't plagiarise my personal statement, you shouldn't do that, that's bad. Um, but I definitely do think that reading other people's personal statements is a really good way to sort of learn what a personal statement even is in the first place. Minus for economics specifically, as you could probably see on the title of this video, I used it to apply to Cambridge, UCL, LSE, St Andrews and Warwick. Um, and it got me into Warwick, which is my current firm, and it also got me an interview into Cambridge, so it's not a complete shambles. That's it from me, and I'll see you at the end of this video. Bye! Okay, so to begin with, um, I have my introduction paragraph, and you could pause it just now really quickly if you'd like to read it, and otherwise I'm just going to get straight into this entire paragraph. So, what I think was useful about this paragraph, um, or no, what I think was good about this paragraph um, that I wrote is the fact that I definitely began from my own perspective and my own point of view. I think a mistake would be to immediately delve in to things such as literature or potentially um, other people's studies, other people's research in a personal statement, because when the admissions officers are going to be reading it, the introduction and the conclusion are probably the paragraphs which they're the least likely to skim through. And if you make it into something based on someone else, it really just does, it becomes more of an essay to them. It's not a personal statement. So definitely begin with something which is unique to you and specific to your perspective, your view, what you've thought about something, what you've done, what you've seen. And in this case, I talk about my experience in different countries um, and how that allowed me to see economic diversity. And then I go on to relate that to the fact that in my own time, I studied history of Latin America and in my own time, I read this book, um, Why Nations Fail, and I go, I, I relate the three together, and I show that from all of that, I um, sort of created this question. Um, the question I created, let me just really quickly show you, is what is at the heart of wealth inequality? And I then realised how complex a response would be to this question. But what did I not do? What did I what did I struggle in um, in this in this paragraph now that I look back at it? Well, I'll tell you right off the bat that I read probably five other people's personal statements and three of them began in their introduction with the exact same theme of living in different countries or coming from different backgrounds and because of this seen economic diversity. So definitely, if you're writing your statement and you're, you know, sort of doing, you're trying to find something that's unique to you, by all means, still go for something generic, still go for something general, which maybe many people have experience in. But what I didn't do is then use this more general, you sort of like general, it's still personal, but general theme um, and general experience, but make it very, very niche to myself. In this case, I probably would have would have benefited from maybe going into depth about the specific countries I lived in. And the reason why I say this is because here I sort of more focus on Latin America and I sort of more focus on, you know, inequality. So I think here, whilst different countries definitely applies to the first sort of idea of having experience in wealth inequality, I probably would have benefited much more if I spoke about the contrast between two specific countries. Um, and also, when it came to the literature, um, I maybe should have mentioned a few more specifics about what I, what I, what I grasped from 
what I read because as you'll see in some of the later paragraphs I mention more literature um, but I think it's less applied and in this case because it's so applied to my own experience this makes it good but I should have gone into more depth rather than then trying to include more literature later on and that you can pause really quickly if you'd like to read this paragraph. Um, but here I go in to mention two other books and whilst that's all good and I, you know, I, I did sort of explain what I learned from it, um, this, this use of literature is far more effective and I should have gone into far more depth focusing on one piece of literature. So my advice would definitely be when you mention a piece of literature, make it applied um, specific to yourself and your perspective of it and it's better in this sense i'd say quality over quantity uh, because you know you do have few characters you don't have many characters um for your personal statement at all i think once you finally do a few more drafts you will realize that honestly there's a lot more to talk about than you would have thought and that's when it's really really important not to make the mistake of thinking quantity because here i you know i think what i thought was okay I'm name dropping quite a few books and I'm name dropping quite a few sort of, you know, more more jargon like words. And that will impress uh, the, the admissions officers. When in reality, something which I have learned is you don't need to use really fancy words in your thing. The most successful personal statements which I read in reality were the personal statements which had the most experience in them. And by that, I mean um talking about what you have done and what you did from certain bits of information rather than saying i know this i know this i know that i did this and etc etc um this next paragraph once again feel free to pause um i go on to explain how my i guess my interpretation of economics once again, I do think this is effective because the whole point of a personal statement is to express your passion and your fascination for a subject. And the reality is, economics, everybody who picks economics will probably actually have pretty similar reasons. Because, I mean, economics, firstly, is one of the most popular courses in the world at the moment. So, so many people are going to be applying for it from so many different backgrounds. So I guarantee you, there, are, there will be at least one other person applying to your course, to your uni, with a similar story to yours. Um, but at the same time, as, as, as I already mentioned, you know, this isn't your fault. This isn't something you should worry about because it's natural. Um, but then the way to, I guess, advantage yourself and, you know, still ha make your experience have a competitive edge is by not going into the generics in too much depth. In this case, I put economics at central to our world, influence in science, business, capital, geopo geopolitics, and history. All good. Um, it's all fun and games, and it's all it's you know it's true, but it's a statement. The admissions officer knows this, so if I could change that, I definitely would. And the way I do it is either. Um, I mean, it does in this in this sense. I do use this comparison to. I don't see it purely as a method of analysis. It's also a mean of finding solutions. But I guess this sentence isn't really necessary here. I could have used these characters for something else rather than just a random statement. Um, I I like how I then say my perspective of things. I say that I don't see it as this. I also see it as a mean of finding solutions because the many different interpretations to economics depending on your specific passions within the discipline. Um, and here, I think I'm also going into, you know, what I want to do and maybe, you know, hinting as to what I want to do in the future with my education in economics. Um, then also here I go into talk about COVID and um, I guess sort of what I've learnt in terms of, you know, I guess the global economy um, and how it's been impacted. And then I also relate this piece of information to another book, which is The Power of Creative Destruction. Issue with this part of the paragraph is that I had this really good sort of start where I give my perspective and then once again, I go into 
generics. I go into statements, I go into this book and um, what I learned from the book. But here, I think the issue is, my phrasing especially is, I say, the power of creative destruction explains blah, 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 blah. In instead of saying something like, one of the key messages I liked, or one of the key themes, etc., which I sort of inferred from the book, um, was so and so. I provide sort of like a summary, and you know, if you're writing for Goodreads, um, you know, one like a summary website for books or something, fine. But this is a personal statement, and this is unfortunately not personal. I think my intention and the reason why I wrote this in the first place is because I wanted to prove to the admissions officer that I knew how to read. I read books about economics. I'm passionate about economics. But I think an important thing is to show, not prove. If I want to talk about literature, put it in one small sentence that I've read in blah, 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 blah. And then go in to show that I've read it, show genuinely what I did from it. For example, I read this and it interested me and therefore it prompted me to find work experience in this, it prompted me to read another book, it prompted me to do research on this. Don't go, it's, it's good to name drop things you've done like books, work experience, research etc, but you definitely need to show how that has made you more passionate about economics and here I've not here I've just said what I've done um next paragraph is the paragraph which I already sort of touched upon is a paragraph where I purely talk about literature um and once again it's it's a lot of statements here literature such as blah blah blah, blah does this it does this the only sentence in this whole thing which makes it more personal to me is this interplay between economy, industry and the labour market fascinates me. But I think in a personal statement, having one sentence in an entire paragraph which truly makes it unique to me is not enough. Irrespective of the fact that I've proved to the admissions officer that I know how to read um, and that I, you know, maybe I'm interested in economic literature... I've not really pre it's more mechanical I think this bit is it's more mechanical and I don't you know I had good intention in it I had the intention of you know showing that I am passionate and I really like reading about it but to an admissions officer honestly even though the truth is I really was interested in it it's so easy to just research the blob to a book and lie about it so unless you really relate it and prove that it linked to you onto some other great economic journey in your life. It is a bit of a waste of space. Um, next on, I go to talk about my work experience. I think this was a really decent paragraph, actually, and I'll tell you. At first, I didn't like it. And the reason why I didn't like it was because it's simple. I did work experience. I learnt this. I did this. What made it memorable was so-and-so. Unlike in the other paragraphs where I've done a lot of fancy sort of, you know, more, you know, I, like I, I've gone into, I've got better vocabulary maybe, of better sort of examples, more sort of, as I already said, economic terminology. Um, here, not necessarily the case, but what I think makes this a good paragraph is the fact that this is completely about myself. I talk about something I did. I spoke about what what I did and you know how how it benefited me or how I learnt from it, and then I talk about you know much more fur further. I talk about sort of like the long term things that I got from it in regards to economics, and I guess maybe sort of what I enjoyed about it the most. It, it's all about me, and I think that's good. I definitely think in this thing, um, I sort of have a bit of repetition in regards to I thought the so-and-so was important and then I also you know talk about I guess the company and sort of where I did the work experience a bit more than the actual theme of economics but I still think it worked I don't think it's really an issue 
when you're doing an economics personal statement, I think something that might be useful is to know that you don't need to make each paragraph include economics in it. Here, for example, I barely talk about economics specifically. I mention economic diversity, but I think what I mention here um, as something of my preference, I mention trade issues, trade issues and sort of industry. And I can guarantee you that the admissions officers for economics will know, and all the professors reading it will know what is economics and what isn't economics. You don't need to name drop um, economics in all of your paragraphs. Assume that they know what smaller sort of smaller, I guess, sort of subsections, uh, smaller topics within economics are, um, and just go straight in them, into them. Like here, I speak about trade issues. It makes it more interesting rather than having economics this, economics that. I learned economics, blah, blah, blah. Um, here then I talk about more mathsy. So I tried to make my parcel statement sort of humanities and then more mathsy um, because that sort of, I guess, reflected my A-level choices. I did a geography, history, maths and further maths. And this was the maths and further maths aspect. <laughs> um, Right off the bat, first of all, pause um, if you'd like to have a quick read. But if I continue, I think the things which I messed up on are the fact that, once again, I made a statement to my beginning. I think if you want to use a statement, fine, but don't begin with the statement. Always begin with your perspective of something or your interpretation of something. For example, here I could have said something like doing statistical modelling or having experience with calculus, etc., which I mentioned in the middle, if I said that that proved to me why it's a bit, like that just makes it better. It just makes it far more better than just saying that it's evident, so and so. Um, relate it to yourself. Next thing that makes me cringe a bit is I say, as a top performer in maths, I welcome this. Honestly, I think at this point I was just scared about the people not thinking I'm a really good math student because I applied with predicted A star maths, A further maths, and I don't know, maybe it made me it made me insecure about my father maths, okay? So I tried to prove it in my personal statement, but it was a pretty a pretty impractical attempt. Um, don't, don't talk about your opinions of yourself. This is an opinion. This is obviously not a fact. Don't, don't do that. Um, and then I go on to, this is good. I talk about here, um, what I want to do and why I want to do it. I, I really like the ending, um, that I say that I want to delve more into specific areas so that one day it can make and contribute my own sort of mathematical contribution thingies. I like that, that's nice. Um, next paragraph, I tried to include all of the more general things because I know for top universities, I apply to Cambridge, for example, a lot of the personal statements are really like 90% academic, 10% sort of more general. This was my more general paragraph, but I still try to make it very focused on economics. And honestly, I think this paragraph was okay. Um, I talk about the languages I've learned. I talk about, also, pause if you'd like to read it first really quickly. Um, but I talk about languages. I talk about what the languages have done um, to me how they've helped me uh, or how they've made me more passionate in an economic sort of perspective. I talk about reading The Economist and how that's also aided me, helped me be more current, more balanced, etc. And then I talk about debating societies and being writing articles for an eco committee and how that's you know, helped me also uh, with regards to sort of general economics, like research methods and the use of complex data and statistics to support arguments and articulate. Um, so that's, that's all very good, I think. I think that indicates that I'm someone who has the ability to learn economics and understands what you need to learn economics. And I, I relate it very much to myself. I, I do like this paragraph, but the thing which I think I wasted characters on is saying, 
This diverse skill set is of benefit to studying economics. I don't know why I'm telling the admissions officer what I think is important or not. You know, I should not include, don't include opinions. Um, even if I, I mean, here I've not phrased it as an opinion, I've phrased it as a statement, but because it's about myself, it just sounds sort of, it sounds a bit arrogant, to be honest. Um, and then my conclusion relates back to another book and I'll just really quickly point out that's another reason why I sort of regret talking and nattering on so much about these two books in a whole paragraph because yes you might say it's just a small paragraph but honestly this is this is big in comparison to how many characters you actually have in the personal statement and because I've mentioned a book there and I've mentioned the exact same book here it's a waste of space in my opinion I could have just mentioned it in the conclusion but anyway I honestly like my conclusion um in comparison to some of the other paragraphs in my personal statement um i finish on a quote and i mention sort of my my end goal with my personal statement i guess what i want to do with economics in the future and why why i'm passionate about it how it couldn't be more rewarding and i think that's nice i think it's I mean, I, Lord knows how many people finished with quotes in their personal statements, but I, I mean, I've not seen many, and I think it's it's just, like, I guess, like a little quirky feature, and I guess the short sentences at the end make the examiner, not the examiner, the admissions officer, more inclined to read. So if you're watching this, you have officially made it through a very, very long ramble about personal statements. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed the video and mo most importantly, I hope it benefited you in some way. If you have any other questions, feel free to, I don't know, just comment or, or send me a message. Um, and yeah, best of luck with your whole economics university application journey. And I hope to see you at the day.